thought I would record a short video on one of my favorite endgame positions, and that's the Saavedra position, and that's what you see in front of you, and it's white to move and win, and amazingly, despite being down our rook for a pawn, white is able to convert here, but what's more amazing about this position is that for a while it was thought to be a draw, until a Spanish priest in the late 19th century named Saavedra discovered that this is actually a win, and it's become one of the most famous endgame studies in all of chess. So the main idea that, or the best try for white to win that was once thought to be not quite adequate is c7, immediately threatening to promote the pawn. And so since white black can't play rook c5, or obviously rook d8, black plays rook d6 check. And now if white tries something like king c5, this fails to rook d1 when black has a draw, since if promotes, rook c1 wins the queen, and if the king tries to come towards the pawn, black will just play rook c1 and play rook takes pawn, drawing. So the only other try, really, is king b5. The point of which is that the king guards the only square on the c-file the rook can come to to prevent the pawn from promoting, which means that the only move black really has is rook d5 check, when king b4, rook d4, and now we're going to see why white is using this strategy. King b3, Rook d3, now white plays king c2, and the rook can never can no longer come back to d1 to you know play the skewer, winning the queen, since the king controls c1. So the only try here, and what was thought to lead to a draw for black, is rook d4. Now rook d4 is a really tricky move because it allows the promotion, but as we'll see, after it promotes to a queen, black has rook c4 check. And now if the king moves, obviously we'll take the queen. So the only move is queen c4. But as you can see, that's a stalemate. So that's a draw. So for a long time, everyone thought that although white has this really nice strategy of coming down the board and then playing to c2, threatening to win, it wasn't quite enough because of rook c4 check. However, after rook d4, Saavedra, who was immortalized by this discovery, found the amazing under promotion c8 equals rook. This, lead, this is what leads to a win. And it's kind of amazing because instead of getting a queen, which would be a material edge, white promotes to a piece that black already has, and yet this seals the win. First of all, the point is that rook c4 no longer works because of rook takes rook. And the king, because of the poor position of the black king, white is already threatening checkmate by rook a1. So really the only move to prevent rook a1 mate is rook a4, when we have the winning move, king b3. And I really like this move because it, at the same time, threatens the rook and threatens mate. So as we can see, the only try really is moving the rook will lead to mate. As we'll see, rook a2, for example, lead allows rook c1 mate. So the only try is king b1 when we have king takes rook. Winning a rook, and now white is going to mate in short order, as we can see here. So the under promotion of c8 equals rook is the key to winning this study, and it's one that immortalized Saavedra, as I said, and I think this is a really beautiful endgame study and kind of instructive on ideas about playing with the pawn against the rook. And I also want to mention that this endgame study has a really interesting history, which actually has been discussed various places online, and I'll link to some of those below this video. So just to quickly summarize, we start off with c7, and black's idea of checking doesn't quite work because we can move down the board and then play to king c2, controlling c1. So the only possibility is rook d4. But Saavedra found the beautiful under promotion, c8 equals rook, which then threatens mate, and after rook a4, king b3, we managed to fork, create a double attack on the rook and also the threat of mate, and this is winning for white. So now you see how to win the Saavedra position, one of the most famous endgame positions, or endgame studies.